Marvel's Avengers might not have shown any gameplay to the public at E3 this year, but behind closed doors there was a half an hour gameplay that left a lot of people quite impressed. It's not yet available to the public unfortunately, it might get released in the upcoming weeks or months, but until then we have a ton of new info to go over from people who played it, including of course the gameplay, character progression, mission design and a lot more including an interview with the lead producer at Crystal Dynamics. So aim that like button if you enjoyed this and let's dive right into it. Now the Behind Closed Doors showcase featured a 25 minutes gameplay of one of the starting missions, parts of which we already saw in the actual trailer, of course with the celebration being interrupted with an explosion on the Golden Gate Bridge and the team having to investigate it, take down the threat and save as many lives as possible. This particular mission was one of the more linear ones as it's set in the beginning of the game where you're slowly introduced to each of the starting characters, so your control is first given over Thor and you can immediately engage into combat with enemies and there's a combination of quick time events that you can use as well as your own abilities. So his skills include regular melee attacks both with the hammer and with the fists and you can grab enemies as Thor and even smash them into the ground which sounds really awesome. You can also electrify your hammer or spin it around really fast and this will cause your attacks to be even more powerful and this in turn can even cause enemies to be thrown like over 100 meters away. Thor can also pin enemies to the wall with the hammer and then engage into combat with fists so you can potentially stun an enemy to the wall and take care of the rest of the group and of course the hammer controls were compared to the ones in God of War as the hammer does damage the enemies in its path when you throw it or call it back into the hands. There's also more devastating attacks, these are not just the only ones, like for example there's a lightning blast attack that sends a shockwave around Thor and this will cause all of the ground in the region to pretty much be blown away but of course later on it was confirm that all of the heroes will have skill trees and different skills are in them and can invest points in these which potentially means you can create builds and your Thor can be different compared to someone else's Thor for example. As I've said the mission is designed to introduce you to each character one by one as it moves forward so the sequence on the bridge goes on and eventually you'll transition to the next Avenger and after Thor you will be given control over Iron Man who is really awesome at you know flying and pretty much attacking enemies who are also flying. He uses his iconic attacks some of which can be seen in the trailer including of course his uni beam or his hand blaster but out of all of the characters the Hulk was said to be the most polished. Both both visually but also animation and skill wise. You get to play him after finishing the fight sequence with Iron Man on the bridge and it's been reported that Crystal Dynamics did a really good job at recreating Hulk's destructive power so you can grab one or even two enemies at the same time, throw them or smash them against one another, you can do a clap attack with the hands that creates a shockwave that pretty much sends enemies flying and of course the movement is as you would expect, you can run and jump very far but you can also like twist walls and run onto them which is really interesting it's really hard to describe Captain America is the next one you'll get in control except he is on the heli carrier and not on the bridge with the rest of the team and his attacks include regular punches and kicks as you would expect as well as attacks with the shield and you can use the shield to ram into enemies so you knock them down or throw it at enemies and even do combos with it like for example throw it at one enemy recall it and once it reaches you just kick it into the next enemy me, so you can take two at almost the same time, which sounds really awesome. Of course, one of his special attacks was said to be a shield charge, so you charge the shield with red energy and then slam it into the ground for a huge shockwave. This pretty much sends everybody really far away after you do it. The mission then transitions to Black Widow as she has to fight Taskmaster and we also saw a sequence of this in the trailer as well and she was shown using guns to shoot enemies so she doesn't just use melee she uses guns too. There's also an invisibility cloak that she can use as well as a charge up electric punch attack that she can do and of course the mission pretty much concludes with uh, what we saw in the trailer with the Hellier crashing and everything that has happened after that. So of course this is one of the introductory missions that gives you an idea of how to play the game. Now as far as hero balancing goes, as you would expect, Crystal Dynamics assures us that all of the characters will feel powerful and efficient at taking down foes. Characters are balanced of course against each other and the enemies and the environment will be catered to one hero or another. So there are situations where a certain hero will shine against another in certain combat scenarios, but that doesn't mean any of them will feel underpowered, it's just that some of them will be more efficient 
and I mean it makes sense from a gameplay point of view. Balance in a game with a very diverse set of heroes is very important to keep players interested in more than just a small selection of OP characters, but of course that remains to be seen. Now the game does have a campaign where various missions will have you switch through each hero and this is so you can get to learn each hero and all of its movesets or at the very least the basics. But of course after this you will have missions that branch out into entire story arcs and they will open up and even be more tailored towards a certain hero. So for example there is going to be a story arc for Iron Man or for the Hulk or everybody else in the team and as you play with them you will open up other missions or paths for whatever hero you are playing. Now not all missions are scripted and straightforward as the first few ones, some of them leave a little bit of uh, breathing room. In an interview with the lead designer it was confirmed that while some levels are designed for a specific hero, others allow more freedom of what you can do as well as where you can go. But do keep in mind that this game isn't going to be open world and I quote there's way too many different places to explore for that to have made sense so it looks like there's going to be a main hub base and from there you will be able to pick off these missions and move on to the next one and yeah it's not going to be open world so the areas will be smaller but they're going to be more diverse it's kind of like a loot shooter for example like destiny warframe or even monster hunter to some extent at the very least that's my impression of it on top of this new areas will be added over time for free as it was said so there's more stuff to look forward to but no specific time frame was given like for example if there's going to be a weekly or monthly schedule I think that is way too far off to even consider at this point but the story will keep evolving new threats will arise and new characters will be introduced along the way as you probably already know and supposedly the plan is to provide online content support for the game for at least a few years though again no time frame was given Anyway, the game can be played fully solo as you know already, but there are missions that are better aimed for a group of online players, they might require more coordination, it might be more difficult to complete them, so you might want to play with some friends. But if you don't have any friends to group up with, you can of course use the game's matchmaking system and the game is said to have matchmaking and this should really make things really easy. As you play through the game you unlock levels for the characters you play as well as gear that drops from enemies or are rewarded from completing missions, which sounds really awesome, I'm not really sure exactly how visually these will change your characters, maybe it's going to be something similar to Anthem where you get gear pieces that don't necessarily alter the looks of your character but give you new skills instead or new stats or new modifiers. So it's going to be very important for the team to do a proper balancing of these new gear pieces and of course make the loot system enticing. Following the disaster that happened with Anthem I think other developers should take note of what happened and try to make that load system as enticing as possible, as rewarding as possible and not feel like a complete chore filled with RNG that, you know, is simply not fun to begin with. But of course between these two there's a good level of mix and matching of abilities and skills so that any two of the same heroes won't always be the same. For example, your Black Widow will feel and look different and even use different skills compared to someone else's Black Widow, which sounds really nice, it seems that you're given the possibility to kind of recreate your character as you want it as your skill set is also diverse to begin with and you can only use a limited of them at the same time. So the skill tree which is specific to each of the characters should give you multiple options and quite a little bit of freedom on how you want to proceed. As far as character customization goes, as I've said your character looks can be altered with outfits. So there's going to be a mix of outfits you can pick from and uh, be rewarded and some of them are going to be from the old comic books while some of them will be more recent versions and there's going to be something for everybody at the very least that is what the lead designer is assuring us. Anyway a lot of this info got me excited because it seems quite ambitious and it's not a small feat to recreate such iconic heroes all at once into one single game. Which is why I'm also cautious about it because there's way too many ambitious projects recently that flopped really really badly. The fact that there's a hub world with distinct regions to pick from can be a plus for the game rather than a full open world one that might be more empty or not as you know diverse have more creative freedom for the team to build cool looking missions. We already learned from games like Anthem that boring open world games 
aren't necessarily better, especially so when all of the encounters in it are pretty much the same all over again. And finally, of course, the business model also looks quite appealing from a consumer point of view. There's free content post-launch and of course, content support after release. But again, I'm cautiously optimistic about it because we heard these words so many times before. Free content, free cosmetics, free whatnot isn't always an indication that the game is going to be good, so definitely not a guaranteed for sure, but it remains to be seen how this is going to happen. For now, what we know is that the game will release in May 15, 2020, so there's quite a long way to go. The introductory mission left a lot of people impressed, but also raised a ton more questions, so later on this day, we might see another Q&A with the developers, so hopefully this will answer more questions. Now in the meantime, tell me what you guys think about the game, comment your opinion down below on this info on the trailer you have seen so far also don't forget to hit that like button in the meantime if you enjoyed this video subscribe and activate the notification bell if you want to see more of this and i will see you guys next time so peace out